Okay, I want to go over how I look at money. Um, this is a very simple way of doing it, and I've made this little spreadsheet to uh, make it more obvious. Basically, what I have is box A, B, C, and D. This is how I set my finances up. Box A are the immediate bills, the your regular monthly bills. As you can see, you've got electric, water, rent, car insurance, groceries, all the usual stuff that generally doesn't change, but you have to pay every month. Box B is things like uh, you could have an uh, internet bill that comes in every three months or something. So you get quality bills in there because you're not paying it every month, but you need to put money aside for it. Uh, car tires, because although they may not change in this month, it's worth putting uh, money aside. I put 90 on here. This could actually be as low as 10 because uh, they're not due for changing. Uh, after school clubs, because they're not essential, but at the same time, you want your kids to go to them. So you budget for it. So it's going to be a monthly bill, but it's not an essential monthly bill. And then things like anniversary presents are things that you have to budget for. Uh, so that still stays in that column because it's, it's something you don't really want to forget. Column C are like things that you've got upcoming through the year that you want. Uh, for example, you want to save for your holiday, save for a new car. Um, maybe your computer's on its way out or it needs computer parts. That goes in here because they're not essential. They're not going to, if, if these things don't happen, they're not going to impact on your life. Uh, saving for a new home, it's not going to happen this year, but you could save the money and put it in this pot. So that goes in uh, box C. Box D are the throwaways, what I call the leftover money. Uh, going out on a Friday, maybe you want to do a college course, but it's a hobby course, not one that's actually going to uh, improve your working or improve your finances. And as you can see, that's how it's done. This is how it's structured for me. And the other people that have these little envelopes would actually physically put the money in different envelopes. But basically, it's the same structure. Box A, box B, box C, box D. Because the envelopes, they have um, the bills. So they'll actually put the physical cash amount into box A, which is an envelope uh, for each bill. For me, this is the way I work. And this one works for me very well. Now, the other reason you want to do it like this, and this is where it becomes useful, is you can see that the income for the month is 1698 But if we go down here and add everything up, it's, because uh, I altered it, it's now 1848 So, 1848 So basically, our outgoings are more than our income. Sounds very familiar in the UK. But also when you look at it like this, you can see certain ways that you can change your money. Um, because what you want to try and do is reduce box A, because at the moment it's here, and box D is here. You want to try and get your life in balance. And what I would do is I look at the credit card bills here. There's 250 um, a month. Now, that's a lot of money. And if you're paying 250 a month, it means you're paying a lot of interest every month. It's compounded interest. It's, you know, they're making money off you every single month. So what you do, and this is how, you, how to get ahead in life, you take this money from here, which is currently 200 total. You don't need to do the college course. Don't, you won't be going out this Friday. Um, you then increase that. So that becomes 450. And you've just reduced your college course now you keep them in there but you you put no funds towards it this month now you still need to reduce your costs uh, you're still out by what's that what's the difference on that that's uh, 1848 minus 1698 so that's a sum of you're out by 150 so you need to reduce 150 so you're not going to be saving for your new home this month. So that's it now in balance. But if you're like me, you find this a bit frustrating because it's like, well, what's the point of saving for a new car when you still got credit card debt to pay? So let's not save for the car this month. Let's stick another 50 on that. So that's now up to 500. That's now gone. Holiday, still want to save for, but maybe you'll do it at 25. 
and then they increase that by 525 and basically this is how you start to see although this in the short term this is going up in the box A long term is coming down because you're reducing your credit card bill by overpaying um, most people don't do this. This is why you'll see that they try to work on where you're just paying the interest a month because that means they've trapped you in debt. What you want to do is actually overpay it. You want to clear that debt and uh, credit cards normally the worst uh, one for having credit with. So that's why I recommend just hammer it. And within 3-4 months you will actually see a significant change in how much you're paying back. But if you can retain it at a high level with the repayments, you can pay it off, wipe it out, and get ahead in life. And what you'll find is as things start to improve, the credit cards, bills, if you're like me, don't exist anymore. Car loan. I buy an old car until I can afford a new one. And I pay in cash. There is no loan. Groceries, actually, is because quality of life improving. Car insurance and change and stays in. And okay. It's 898 on the basics, but I want to go out for a, I want to go to college, and that total, we're now sitting at 1228, minus 1228, within a short period of time, we're already 620 better off by getting rid of the debts. And obviously you keep punching that up, you know, because to look at like this new computer here um, if you're not gonna get the parts today or this month pay on the credit card get the credit card gone tired pay it on the credit card because it's not helping you saving for quarterly bill pay on the credit card get your credit card gone you want to get rid of everything as much as possible and I've seen people transfer most of their salary or all the salary onto credit cards before because um, on a monthly basis you can hammer the credit card a bit but only if you start to only spend what you need to spend and this is why these boxes are important because you can monitor exactly where you're spending money the problem with that little bit of plastic is not hard cash in your hands which is where people detach themselves from real money they don't see it as cash they just see it as a little bit of plastic it's not real money look at it as real money look at it as hours look at it your time there's bits of times of your life that you'll never get back and if you start structuring this way, you'll find that you can manage your money far.